I'm uh, Caitlin Ortega, and I'm a first-year PharmD student, and I'm here with Dr. Santos to conduct an interview. So, um, yeah, Dr. Santos, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Jose Santos from Mexico City National University of Mexico. So, I know your specific uh, area is in pediatric infectious diseases. What uh, led to your interest in that and in public health? Um, it has to do with my previous training. Before going to medical school, I uh, obtained a degree in biology and a master's in microbiology. Uh, so that kind of led me, actually, I was geared to pursue a PhD in microbiology. And I was accepted to a uh, medical micro PhD at Stanford University. Uh, that year, uh, I took a sabbatical doing research uh, in a totally different field, the circadian rhythms, uh, the biologic clock. I worked with a very uh, wonderful gentleman, Colin Pittenberry at Stanford University, uh, in the human biology program. And that, and since I was already accepted to the medical school, I was persuaded by him and others that rather than being a PhD, I should go after an MD, which really had not been in my radar. Uh, and I did. I went and pursued, <laughs> I went to pursue the, PhD, the MD degree uh, at Stanford. And as a medical student, I, uh, I did a specialty rotation in infectious diseases. It was kind of like, it's pretty, pretty natural uh, microbiology. And to make a long story short, I, I uh, pursued a residency in pediatrics at Stanford and uh, did some more infectious diseases while I was a resident. Following that, I spent three years at the University of Utah in, in infectious disease and clinical immunology. And from there, I went to Boston University, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in the Department of Pediatrics uh, as an assistant professor in the area of infectious diseases and clinical pathology. And I stayed there uh, for seven years and, uh, doing research uh, in, in infectious diseases. And, and that's what I did basically in the University of Utah, uh, and clinical and laboratory research. Uh, and in, in, in Boston University, I did more clinical and less, uh, less lab research. <clears throat> and I, I, I obtained a Fogarty International Scholar, Senior Scholar Award uh, to go to Mexico, uh, where I'm from originally. And uh, I went for a year and I stayed, and I've been there ever since. Uh, and basically, I went to train young physicians in their infectious disease with a more pragmatic approach, uh, including uh, laboratory research as well as clinical uh, research. So uh, along the way, uh, I, I spent uh, 11 years as head of the infectious disease department in the, in the research unit uh, in, in next to the Children's Hospital. And when I left, I, I uh, was invited to join the Ministry of Health as head of the immunization program. I did that for seven years. Subsequently, I went back uh, to be director of the Children's Hospital for five years, and then, um, since then I've been at the university. It's the um, experience in the administration program pivoted me to go into international uh, health, uh, basically in, in uh, committees with the World Health Organization and the Pan American Health Organization locally in the, in the region of the Americas, and I'm still doing that. I, I have a laboratory, a research laboratory. Uh, we work with, uh, with viruses, uh, including measles virus. We work with uh, mechanisms of antibiotic resistance in bacteria, the molecular mechanisms, 
and we have a clinic for children that live with HIV AIDS. So I've been uh, basically uh, fortunate to have that experience or those experiences and uh, continue to be active uh, with WHO and Pan American Health Organization. Can you speak a little bit about the connection between public health, infectious disease, and economic development for Mexico and Latin America? Well, um, infectious diseases, uh, again, uh, I think the, the pediatrics is a, is a very, it's a natural for, for thinking about why children go to the doctor, from mm -hmm. otitis media to diarrheal disease or respiratory disease. Um, but again, since I got into the prevention part, the immunization part, well, prevention is public health. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I expanded in that area of public health. I, I, for the six years, I was in the board of the uh, Diarrheal Research Center in, in Bangladesh, Dhaka, Bangladesh. Um, and uh, basically, in looking at aspects of uh, research administration uh, in, in a center such as the one in Dhaka, it's a very prestigious center that basically uh, was the founder of the oral rehydration for diarrheal disease. We've done a lot of work in cholera, et cetera. So public health is a natural for anything that has to do with prevention and health. But it's very, it's a broad spectrum because from this, not only infectious disease, obviously it's chronic diseases and the social determinants of health uh, that are very important, especially in developing countries. Can you identify a specific impactful experience that has motivated you to continue in your work? It would be presumptuous to say that I have been impacted in anything, but uh, <laughs> I feel very good about myself in terms of the people that I've trained. Uh, it's uh, something I, I have coined the self altruism do it because you feel good. Uh, but I've been involved uh, certainly in the, in the research experiences that have made changes, uh, changing the administration program in Mexico, for example. And we're currently working with the European uh, branch of the WHO, looking at the elimination of measles and rubella in Europe, and, uh, and looking at the elimination of measles and rubella in the Americas. So uh, those are modest, but uh, for me, very significant uh, contributions. What can the individual healthcare provider do to have an impact on infectious diseases? Well, I think that uh, uh, I'm a firm believer in uh, being responsible for your own health. Uh, uh, common things you don't smoke, you drink moderately, and you don't drive fast, uh, you wear a seatbelt. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in terms of a healthcare provider, uh, I think that. There's a lot to be said about the general practitioner that, uh, that has a holistic view of the health in the family. Uh, uh, because you, you get into specialized medicine uh, and uh, you lose, well, you, not necessarily, but I mean, it's a generalization, but you lose sight of the human being. You look at the disease, you look at the organ. Uh, if it's a cardiologist, he's looking at the heart and the arteries, or the nephrologist is looking at the kidney, uh, the kidney stones. Um, or, so uh, I think that looking at, uh, at the health of the family and looking from the very onset of, of life um, at uh, styles of life, uh, or lifestyles rather, uh, has a lot to do with uh, providing good health for, for individuals. And of course, you know, people have uh, bad genes and bad luck and get diseases. And the idea is to uh, have an opportune uh, assessment of, uh, of health and basically periodic uh, health uh, evaluations, uh, not only physical exam, but laboratory tests as you get older to look for signs of uh, impending disease, uh, cholesterol levels, etc. Uh, looking at your blood pressure, uh, exercising, and trying to eat as healthy as possible. Uh, all of that, I think, uh, goes into what a, a general practitioner or a physician or a pediatrician, an internist, gynecologist would, would, would tell you. So, 
I think a lot of it is uh, common sense and good bedside manner. Can you share with me your opinion on the outbreak of measles at Disneyland? Yes. Um, uh, I have worked very closely with uh, that aspect. Uh, and, and now that I'm on these two international committees to eliminate uh, measles and rubella, and the congenital rubella syndrome is associated with rubella. Uh, it's very difficult to legislate uh, uh, even though legislating means doing good of the individual. But in immunization, the good of the individual is for the good of the community. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's where it's a fine line. Um, and what has happened, uh, unfortunately, is that predicated or based on, on bad science, uh, the notion that certain vaccines were, would cause certain bad side effects like autism um, uh, or other conditions led uh, or has, has fostered the creation of groups that are anti-vaccine, including it has nothing to do with intelligence. Intelligent people, or, or, or not, intelligence is not the right word, uh, educated people mm -hmm. that perhaps are not that intelligent, uh, have gone on a limb to discredit the, the effect of um, vaccination. But in point of fact, in addition to potable water, sewers, vaccines are probably the biggest contribution to uh, healthy human beings. I mean, We've eliminated uh, smallpox, so we are very close to eliminating polio um, in the world. I mean, there are pockets of it in certain countries. And certainly, uh, if you look at what was happening 100 years ago in this country uh, with diseases such as diphtheria, or whooping cough, uh, measles, uh, polio, and you look at now, I mean, uh, 100 years later, and Maybe physicians have never seen measles. I'm talking about physicians that were trained in this country, and, uh, and basically, since we, there hasn't been measles, uh, wild measles in the United States uh, for over 20 years, in reported cases, mm -hmm. and measles is a very contagious virus, and it can go from uh, causing a mild disease to causing severe disease, uh, uh, and complicating your immune system to be susceptible to bacterial diseases. So, the, I think the important, here, the important part here is, is for uh, people in, in the office to be responsible, as your president has gone out and, and recommended uh, uh, people to be immunized. But again, the difficulty lies in the, at what point does your freedom of choice impinge on my safety? As a student, I guess, um, is there any advice you could give students interested in pursuing a career in your field? I think there are a lot of opportunities uh, and from, from different angles. Uh, you don't have to become a physician, and if you become a physician, you don't have to be an uh, infection specialist. I think there, 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 there's a role for many, many areas, many fields uh, from economics, uh, uh, to obviously the pharmaceutical industry um, and social scientists. I mean, the social determinants play a major role, uh, especially uh, how social determinants, uh, poverty uh, specifically, uh, make you a vulnerable individual in a vulnerable society. And I think that uh, we can contribute from almost, I mean, it's the imagination. Uh, it's a super tutorial limitation. <laughs> Your imagination limits uh, what uh, what think that what can do.